it's me, Mark Robertson, and I am back in today with another episode of Sacramento Kings Youth Invasion. And this will be the last episode of the players portion of this series. We are going to have one final episode where I will be choosing out of the three players that I have given for each of these nine players who I think they will develop into. And then I'll list them all out in a good lineup and include some other players, including the veterans and stuff like that. But... Before we get into that, thank you guys so much for hitting that subscribe button. Thank you guys that are all new to the community. You guys are amazing. Thank you guys for joining this community. We are almost up to 300 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. And don't forget to hit this video up with a like while you're commenting down below. Not only about the lowest, highest, and middle ceiling for this player, but also comment down below a question for the final episode. I'm going to be doing a Q&A for the half of that final video. You guys can just... Honestly, ask me any reasonable question that you guys got. Anything about me, anything about the Kings, anything about this young team, anything about the future of this channel, where I want to take this channel, what I want to do for this channel. Just ask me down below, but don't forget to hit a like up on that. Also, if you're new to the community, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I can't wait for you guys to join the community. And thank you guys. And today's sub of the day is going to be Xander Paris Beats. Thank you so much for joining the community. I always see you coming down below, always giving good feedback during these videos. Thank you so much. I'm glad to have you a part of this community. And let's get right into it. So, today we're going to be talking about center out of Greece, Yorgos Papionis. Yes, the center that was taken in the 13th pick of the 2016 NBA draft, the pick that got traded for Marquise Chris. And this is a very interesting situational pick. He came in on ultimately going to the D, going to the D League or the G League now to start the season, coming in for the last like 22 games with the departure of DeMarcus Cousins, which was kind of crazy because this 20-year-old 7-1 center playing backup center was getting 16.1 minutes a game. That's a good clip for such a young player. I'm glad to see that he is getting some minutes. He's slowly proving himself to be still or a good, relevant backup big man. Moving on to his points per game, he averaged 5.6 points a game, which honestly, 5.6 points is pretty good for only 22 games. Shooting percentage, 55% from the field, 2.5 of 4.6 attempts, not the greatest, three-point shot, 0%, 0 of 0.1 attempts, free throws, 8.6, or 86.8, 86% with a 0.5 to 0.6 ratio. So hopefully those numbers slowly go up. Obviously with less time, he didn't really get to be in the offense much. And hopefully his shooting game gets better because I've seen a little bit of his shooting game from when he played over overseas for, in his home country. And I was like, this guy can actually shoot. We just gotta let him like get in his own here in the United States. Moving on to his rebounds, 2.9 or 3.9 rebounds, 1.1 O boards. 1.1 O boards as a rookie. That's pretty good. I'm excited to see that he's already getting tough in the paint, getting those O boards. I hope we get to see a lot of O boards this season. Moving on to his defensive boards, 2.8 boards a game. I really do see this kid becoming like an 8 rebound a game, double-double monster off the bench. Moving on to assists, almost 1 assist a game, which is pretty good. It's, it's good to see him passing, getting into his open man. It's always great to see them, them do that. 0.8 blocks a game. As, as we saw in the G League, he was a great blocker there. Hopefully he'll get as good of a blocker here, maybe even to a 2-3 to three range of blocks. Moving into steals, 0.1 steals obviously can get better. Turnovers, 1.1 turnovers. That needs to get a lot better because as we saw in those 22 games, he was kind of his ball handling was kind of on the lower end and could definitely use some improvement. Two fouls a game, which I've said before, as long as you get two in the first half and two in the second half, that's still four. You're not fouling out, so that's good to go. Moving on to his pros, Yorgos Papionis is a great rebounder. Towards the end of the season, he had multiple double-digit rebound games, which is great to see. Also can get in there and get put-back dunks, put-back layups. Him and Scal can take control of that aspect of the game. Moving on to developing post-game, he has a great 
jump hook, which is great to see um, a player kind of have that. Not as good as the sky hook from Abdul Jabbar. Obviously, you're not going to get that good because that guy was just an absolute monster. But his post game is getting better, getting in there, getting some dunks. Be great to see him get better in the post game. And then something that could, like I said, possible mid range game. He showed a little bit off towards the very end of the season when he was getting some good minutes and then showed a little bit off in the summer league, which was good to see. It's good to see him get time, the, get the time to show off what he brings to this team. He came in with having somewhat of a shooting ability in um, the overseas leagues that he was playing in. Moving on to Khan's work in progress. His floor spacing really does need progress. He needs to be taught where to be in a better position on the on the court to make a good pass without interruption due to turnovers, bad pass, and situations like that. Uh, moving on, which is also a big thing, ball handling, ball IQ, focusing more on the basketball, being smarter about who or where you're passing it to, keeping the ball in more to his hip, like keeping it right here, just so that they don't, they can't just like slap it away, like, or get away from him, which Hopefully, we never want to see that happen. And then work of progress defense. He was averaging almost a block a game, which is great to see for 22 games, averaging almost a block a game. Like I said, if he could become a good block machine, that would be great to see. Him and Willie and Scal all getting down in there and getting some good blocks. So now we are going to be moving on his lowest ceiling, his middle ceiling, and his highest ceiling. Like before, don't forget to hit up that pole in the i card it will have all three including and an other button don't forget to hit the other button if you do not like these three options and tell me down below in the comments why you, why you don't like the options and who you would want or who do you see him becoming and then also don't forget to hit me up with those questions that i want to see for the next episode or for the final episode of this series but these are who i got so, lowest ceiling, Costa Kufis. Costa Kufis, a good backup center, a very decent rebounder, and can score in the post when need be, which is great to see. Costa's got his crazy, like, finger roll, finger flip. I don't even know what it's like. It's, it's funny to watch him make that all the time, but, yeah, whatever. Like, jump, like, float jumper, something like that? I, 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 don't, I just don't know. Um, but yeah, that's his lowest ceiling, just another Costa Kufis, which I guess wouldn't be too bad as long as he just adds a little bit more game to him, maybe some long range shooting, like I said. Moving on to his middle ceiling, and this is kind of an interesting situation when it comes to his middle ceiling. I was thinking about this beforehand when I was starting this series, that he's kind of got this game, and I see him being the Sean Bradley Dallas 96 to 98 years. Sean Bradley was a great player, 7-6 center, a great center of his time. Can score 12 points and 8 rebounds when he wanted to and average 2.3 blocks a game. That's insane to me. That is, or 2-2, two, two, I meant 2-3 two to three blocks a game. That's insane to think about to me. I think that would be a great situation for the Kings, have Willie as a starting center and have a Sean Bradley Papianis off the bench, which would be great to see. Moving on to his highlight, highest, and this is only if he can like learn to shoot very consistently. And honestly, I just want to see, and it's not because I'm a Kings fan. So for anyone who's watching this and thinking, oh, he's just a Kings fan. He's just choosing this player because he wants to. No, I'm not. I'm, I actually look up. I have a script, guys. I have something that I look at like with all their statistics, all their everything. And I looked up good shooting centers and Brad Miller's name popped up. And I'm talking about the Sacramento Kings 03 to 05 Brad Miller. This guy averaged about a double-double with 14.9 points, 9.8 rebounds, and was a very good consistent shooter, shooting 52% from the field and 29% from the three. I would love to see Papianis become this. A great backup, kind of like Alan Williams, who can get a double-double whenever he wants to and can shoot. 
and can shoot. That That's great. If we can have two double-double guys, this is crazy. Just imagine when all the veterans are out, right? We're going to have Scal and Harry Giles as our power forwards on this team. Harry Giles and Papianis off the bench getting somewhere between 15 to 18 minutes a game, right? If they both get a double-double, and then you also get Scal and Willie getting a double-double, that's 40 rebounds between four guys. If you only go to the to the bare bones, that's 40 rebounds between four guys. That is, that is some crazy good numbers. And obviously that's the most like un impossible feeling situation for Pompeianus right now, but you never know. This kid's 20 years old. This kid's going into his second year in this league, and he started out on a team where he had to wait until an all-star center moved out of the way. So you never know what he can bring to this team now that he has full reign, and I'm excited to see what this team will bring. You guys <laughs> know that. I talk, say that every single time. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit me up on my social medias. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget to leave me a question about almost anything reasonably to the series, to what's going to come up next, to the Kings, to myself. Leave them in the social media, or leave them on social media. Leave them in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys later, Hoop fans.